Pepe, it's just so nice to see you. You're one of my best friends. Pepe's family has been making wine uh, in the same farm since uh, about the year 1500. So he, not only is he a winemaker, but he's a truly intergenerational, long-term uh, practitioner. So Pepe, we're going to talk about regenerative agriculture. But the first thing I want to ask you, which is how on earth has your family stayed in the same land for 21 generations? Thank you, Miguel, and uh, thank you for uh, having me here at the South Summit. Um, I, guess, uh, I, guess, I guess my main message here to, to, to share, if, if it can be of any, any use or help, is, is the connection with nature. No? And I think this connection is what leads to, to be doing the same thing for 21 generations. Can mm -hmm. you imagine how boring my family is? <laughs> And, um, and uh, we can develop this, this idea, but I really want to insist that the connection with nature um, is the, the, the key element that is, is making our, our humble uh, business uh, uh, able to take it to the next level and, and to become uh, from a small Spanish champagne house uh, a luxury wine uh, player. No? Mm -hmm. So let's talk about regenerative agriculture. What, you know, what made you get into this idea in the first place? In, in this case, it was very coincidental. Co coincidental no? like many, many important things that happen in life are, 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 are random and are uh, a casualty. No? I, was, uh, I was watching um, an exhibit of Juan Miró, the painter, in mm -hmm. London. Mm -hmm. And there, one of his early paintings is called The Farm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, it's uh, not most, his most famous one, but it, it explains he describes his childhood in his uh, uh, Mediterranean farm and how, and in that exhibit they explain how becoming so local, Juan Miró became such an international uh, um, artist. No? So I had the epiphany that really going local is what is really important to become uh, uh, of interest in the world. At that time we were living in New York City, it made us change all our ideas, we came back to live in the farm were uh, with my wife and our four children, and this has become like, like imagine, no, a family from Manhattan to, to a farm in the middle of nowhere. This has been crucial to understand nature and how uh, the regenerative approach is vital for our wines to, to become world class. Mm -hmm. So, what have been the main changes that you've had to make to your farm to make it regenerative? Maybe you can talk a little bit about that. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think to understand this concept, because everybody talks regenerative and everybody talks eco and everybody talks organic and biodynamic, no? but I think we have to simplify a lot. But one key element to understand is the concept of biodiversity mm -hmm. and um, the idea of the Mediterranean mosaic. Mm -hmm. So um, there are five hotspots of biodiversity mm -hmm. on Earth being the Mediterranean basin, mm -hmm. the uh, largest, hmm. and very important here, influenced by humans. So it's not only biological evolution, but the, the, the influence of humans. So this idea of patchwork is the combination of um, forest areas and wild areas mm -hmm. together with, uh, with the agriculture, the, the result of the evolution of humankind. No? Mm -hmm. So this work together of humankind evolution in the natural um, 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 appropriate, uh, I would say, clim climatological uh, area basin, the Mediterranean basin, um, is one of the richest parts in biodiversity on the planet Earth. Wow. So, when you understand this big combination, um, cereal, olive oil, vineyards, um, forest, at a, at a small scale, is what we are developing in our farm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's an integrated farm where we're fostering uh, uh, polyagriculture, um, uh, 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 management of the forest areas, uh, of the water areas, bring back the animals, uh, mm -hmm. etc. No? So I've been to your farm, and I've seen horses plowing the fields. I've seen goats running around uh, the vineyards. Mm. Just, just describe to us a little bit more how this, how this changes the ecosystem. And also, does it make for better wine? 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. This is this is the key question. Oh, thank you, Miguel. So, so th this is again we are in the Mediterranean Basin hotspot. Then we go to the farm organism, and this idea of recuperating the farm organism that we want to share with you today. How does this uh, concrete? No, what are the examples? So, in this moment, Ravento Blanc Farm is a, a pioneer. Um, um, world pioneer in recuperation of animal traction in vineyard management. But this is as simple as going back to the ancient farm, because when my father was little, eight horses would plow all the property. And we're talking about 60 years ago, not 600 years ago. Right. So in 60 years, I say we've gone through maybe uh, from the 1970s, 80s, and 90s, the era of confusion. What we're trying to do here is to go back mm -hmm. to what we had been doing for so many generations. No? Another example, Miguel mentions about uh, uh, the herd of sheep and the herd of goats, that they all have uh, different missions in the farm. No? Um, they are uh, grazing in all the winter uh, um, fields when the vineyard, you know, it's a, it's a plant that stops during the winter. So at that moment, we can free them in all the vineyards, and they are uh, helping us maintain the cover crop lower. Um, and then from bud break until harvest, they are doing uh, forestry management um, to keep the forest clean and uh, to have less risk of, uh, of uh, wildfires, which, as you may know also, in this uh, climate crisis we're living through, mm -hmm. it's a very big challenge, it's a very big menace in, 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 in many places. No? Um, we are working with honeybees. Uh, in, in different, uh, install, uh, strategically in different parts of the farm. So you know that with their flies, they foster, they, they potentiate the, uh, uh, with the pollinization, the maximum flora diversity of the farm. Um, we grow cereal that feeds our horses and our sheep when needed and our pigs, but at the same time um, uh, uh, um, creates a type of biotica flora and, and fauna different from the vineyards and different from the olives. No? Mm -hmm. So this is a basic idea of, of, uh, of um, uh, um, polycultivo, polyagriculture. No? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Miguel asks, no, like, how, how does this affect the wine? No? And um, this is more technical from, 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 our, uh, from our business that uh, I think you will understand very, no? very well. When you um, drink world-class wines, you are drinking liquid geography. So wines that express that origin in the most pure and honest way. So above technology, that has to be uh, uh, the, the maximum you can apply, above your understanding anything, is that expression of nature. So by recuperating the life of the farm, the diversity of the farm, we have more autonomous plants, we have to treat them less as human beings, and we can propose a wine that truly speaks from that origin. That is what interests the people that are looking for the world-class wines or the, the most, I would say, honest wines and pure uh, um, uh, reflection of, of that little part of mm -hmm, the world. Mm -hmm. So one, one of the things that interests me about regenerative agriculture is that, uh, particularly if you have monoculture, if you have tilling, there's a lot of erosion, there's a lot of soil loss, and I wonder if you can maybe speak to that in your farm. I know that some of your farm is on slopes, mm -hmm. so you're going to get maybe more soil loss. Have you been able to see a difference in, 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 in the evolution of the topsoil in your farm? Absolutely. No? So um, when we talk about biodiversity, I always try to gravitate to, to biodiversity at, uh, at the, uh, uh, on the horizon and with, with big fauna and flora. That is my passion. No? But, uh, even more important than that is the diversity of the soils and the structure of the soils. No? Right. And um, one of the uh, biggest challenges that we have now as, as, as growers, as, uh, as uh, uh, wine growers, is to deal with such unpredictable uh, uh, weather patterns. Right. Um, for example, in 2020, we had historical rainfall that we hadn't had until uh, since uh, 1944. But at the same time, we're having to deal with heat waves that are uh, um, uh, unknown in, in, our, in our region. No? So this creates uh, um, uh, two big challenges, like Miguel mentioned very well. One is to deal with erosion, 
-hmm. especially in farms in, uh, in, in, in like hilly areas. That's where normally best wines are made, either in Burgundy, Champagne, uh, Sant Emilion, Priorat, or, or Ribera Sacra, to mention some. So uh, deal with erosion. And the other one is with water uh, retention. Right. And we have uh, learned from the last, uh, I would say, 16 years of going um, serious to regenerative agriculture that, one, that no tilling is extremely helpful because you develop a lot of vegetation in between the vines. And when you have big rainfalls, there is much uh, more holding, so less risk of erosion of all the superficial uh, soils. Mm -hmm. And second, in our case, really critical, is the water ret retention capacity of the soils is much higher. Because you have all the plants, you have all the nutrients, you have all the, all the uh, mycelio, um, mm -hmm. all the fungi and uh, flora, uh, uh, fauna, and e everybody working together as a team, regenerating that soil and giving it more structure, thus more capacity to retain the limited water that we have in the, in the dry season. Yeah. Just out of curiosity, how do you actually measure the health of, of a soil? You measure the health of, of, the, health of the soil by uh, biodiversity um, accounting. So basically, you take samples mm -hmm. of, the different, uh, of the different plots and you compare at, in, in the same period of the, of the, of the year uh, during the different, uh, different uh, right. uh, vintages. No? Um, but also, at a more simple scale, we go with a knife in our pocket and you you, 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 you uh, put the knife in the soil, and if the knife easily enters the soil, mm -hmm. it means that that capacity of regeneration has gone very well. However, when the knife doesn't go inside the, the, the mm -hmm. first uh, 10 centimeters of the soil, and even you can break if it's like a delicate uh, blade, that means that, that this soil is really dead. <laughs> because, because it's not uh, taking the moisture, as you said. Correctly, moisture, uh, structure, that means that the soil is, is, is um, uh, the opposite of compact. Mm -hmm. So very, I don't know the English word, but the, 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 the opposite of compact. Yeah, spongy. Or a spongy yeah, soil, yeah. it means a structured soil. Um, uh, and there are a lot of plants that help this, the soils be more spongy. The fact of plowing with horses is critical because there is minimal compactation yeah. compared to tractors, etc. Yeah. So I think this idea of knife is very, very visual, right? So let's, let's talk numbers a little bit. I mean, how has this affected your business? Hmm. Is, it, is it made it more profitable? Is it costing you more money? Do, do, do the buyers of your wine, are they willing to pay a premium hmm. for, the, for the way that you make your wines? Absolutely, yeah, this is encouraging. Um, you know, when I, when I joined my father in the 90s, we were in bankruptcy. Uh, and uh, my, my grandfather, that was very, very knowledgeable at that time in the moment, passed away super young. And we take two, took a lot of, of wrong decisions. Very, of course, we did a lot of spreadsheets and, 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 and sales and, and uh, human research. And you have to do all these things. No? But that wasn't critical for understanding the business. No? What has been critical, and again, I insist with the first message, is that connection with nature. Why? Because, yes, we're incurring our of costs of, uh, um, for our business, uh, it has cost, um, I don't know, like what, one million of, 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 uh, during 10 years mm -hmm. uh, of uh, turnover that we are on 10 million. So it's not that significant, no? but for a small business, it's, it's important investment. But the way that you repercut these costs in the brand, this is the, what's important, is that what really the premium consumer is willing to pay for. Mm -hmm. So there's a big change that people don't want to drink the wine because James Bond says, you know, I drink this wine on the movies like in the past, or you know, that, that, that fake marketing of, mm -hmm. of, of, of the uh, La Candor de la France, no? of uh, Champagne, for example. No? People now want to drink for real mm -hmm. the work that's behind there. Mm -hmm. So if you are able, and this is very important, to communicate via not expensive uh, resources like social media, etc., what you're doing in your soils, in your farm, with your animals, towards your minimal intervention winemaking, this has been uh, um, of, of interest of all the consumers. Mm -hmm. And of course, that, that leads you that you compete, adding value to your sales right. at a higher price, mm -hmm. and you, you can uh, move away from the promotion discount um, Spanish language, that yes. is what our Spanish wines have been in the past in the international So, so for you, it's markets. a net positive. It's been, not only, yeah. it's been critical. I critical. Mean, it's been the way yeah. to, 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 work, to go 
from the discount and uh, salesman uh, all the time insisting towards building a luxury wine brand in the world of interest of the buyers. And do you, I, I can see there's good acceptance in, in Europe, uh, maybe in the US. How are you finding this in Spain? Is Spain beginning to accept and get more interested in this type of topic? I think Spain is a little behind in terms of, of, um, of uh, consumer understanding, of consumer understanding compared to New York or Paris, but I see uh, that in more cosmopolitan cities, people are more and more interested in, 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 this, in this type of wine. No? Um, I think what is important, though, is that Spain has a huge opportunity in our humble wine industry yeah. towards conquering the world because it's offering the most diverse mm -hmm. um, uh, agriculture, viticulture um, mm -hmm. uh, landscape compared to any other country. Mm -hmm. We have the bigger surface planted, but we're still a little bit young in terms of like marketing. So we haven't done right. the mistakes of France or, or, or Italy being a little bit too flashy. Uh -huh. So it's still so unique and so authentic. And this authenticity together with a good uh, agricultural regenerative natural approach, I think has a lot of potential for, for our, 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 my colleagues in Spain. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, I will raise a virtual glass of Raventosi Blanc. Thank you, Pepe. Thank you for coming all the way from, from Catalonia. And, you know, it's been really wonderful to hear you tell the story, the importance of sustainability, how it's not a cost, how it's, you know, transformed your business. And you've helped the planet, you've helped nature, you've helped your customers. So it's a kind of win all around. So really loved hearing the story. And thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Miguel. Thank you, everybody.